Chair, Speaker, is talking, we're talking about the third attempt, so now I would like to present you something not so heavy. And I will present you the result of our excavation on the top of the Grand Castle, uh, Castle Hill. <laughs> and uh, this uh, excavation has brought new light, new evidence to the last days of the of the Mediterranean area. So, from the geographic view, we will talk about the place that is situated in the solar capital of Bratislava on the river bank of Danube. Uh, from the archaeological view, it's the area where very known three Celts opida uh, from the late uh, Latin period. One is in Bratislava, one is in David, and one is in Brausberg. Uh, Bratislava, the opidum in Bratislava is very known in the literature, of course. Uh, during the last 50 years, they were excavated the many archaeological situations and farms, and now we know uh, about the Bratislava that uh, this opidum has had the two suburbiums and the Acropolis. The, the main facts about this opidum is the Acropolis is uh, 20 hectares and total area with the two superbian had uh, 60 hectares. Opidum has a double mold, uh, probably stone gate. This uh, stone gate was found in the, in the, in the center of uh, all city in Bratislava in the 70s and uh, when no information are this uh, opidum had the local production of, uh, of coins, local coinage, uh, they will find seven coin depots, records, and there is a very deal of the uh, workshop, uh, workshops like pottery, metallurgy, bronze casting, iron working, and gold and silver processing. <coughs> a recent excavation of the, on the Acropolis of Celtic Opidum uh, have been conducted on uh, three various sites on the area of Bratislava Castle the, in, uh, during the 2000 and, uh, 2008 and 2010, led by Dr. Bratislav Lesar, and uh, in the 2013 2014, by, by Marcel. This excavation had brought the unexpected finds related to the imports of Roman construction technique into the middle of the Celtic settlement of Central Europe in the 1st century BC. We found actually two places uh, where the Celto Roman architecture uh, found. The one was in, a, in, the, in this gray, gray scale is the castle, that's our castle. In the middle is the castle yard. And with the violin is, uh, is uh, the remains, there you can see the remains of the architecture from the uh, Latin period. So the one side was in the, in the center of the castle, in the castle yard, and the other side was uh, on the northern terrace where were the, the many uh, barrack buildings and the barrack garden in the 18th century built. So this side, talking about the Latin uh, situation was a uh, very distraction, distracted because they are very modern for the historical, historical uh, distractions. If we are talking about the stone architecture, uh, I give you the same information and then my colleague Andre, who is the specialist for the Latin period, is my specialist in the stage period. Uh, Stone architecture of Roman time was high quality. They have high quality of buildings. Uh, we found the pavements and mosaics and plastered walls. And about that, I will be Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think we have a very good idea about the finds, uh, which uh, totally revolutionized our uh, understanding of the population which was thought to be on the periphery of Celtic world. Uh, so in, uh, the, these uh, uh, stone structures, uh, they have uh, 
uh, no comparison uh, north of the Alps. The uh, site which is uh, most comparable to our situation is Marganberg uh, in uh, southern Austria. So uh, let me say more about the things which we found. So uh, uh, as you see, uh, all the uh, architecture remains. I will now uh, repeat again that uh, most, of, most of them were really badly damaged by the later uh, construction activity uh, at the castle. Uh, they uh, used both raw and work stone. Uh, we found a uh, few elements of the work cornerstone stones. Now uh, we found uh, a lot of uh, fragments, but also in situ pavements uh, of uh, basically two types: uh, pool floors and opposite vitum floors with polishing mosaics. Uh, terrasso types. Unfortunately, terrasso was found only in fragments in secondary positions. Anyway, uh, uh, these are uh, absolutely unexpected finds, uh, such a uh, far away from, let's say, uh, Republican uh, Rome, uh, where we can find uh, uh, similar similar construction elements. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, what we are speaking about are, are only the ground floors um, and some elements of the side walls. Uh, we don't have any peculiar architectural elements, uh, some, I don't know, windows or, or doors. So, um, uh, in the, the, only, the only special element was a doorstep, which, which had the, the hole for the, um, for the door. Uh, but otherwise, we are uh, lacking some more information. Uh, anyway, we have uh, documented uh, painted walls. Uh, uh, the similar situation is in Margalensberg. Uh, wall range of colors red, white, yellow, green, black, blue. Uh, so let me now uh, show you uh, the pictures of the situations we found. Uh, this uh, first structure was found under the castle itself, uh, um, under the castle courtyard. Uh, it's the most uh, uh, nicely preserved uh, mosaic type of the floors. You see different types of uh, elements and uh, yeah, you have some more uh, of the preserved uh, mosaic floors and uh, as I said, uh, some elements in secondary positions. Uh, here you even see the reconstruction of the ornament on the real floor. Uh, so uh, let me continue <coughs> with uh, Roman Domus One, which was on the northern terrace. Uh, here uh, we found this terrazzo type of pavement. Uh, and here you see also the architectural disposition. Again, uh, we are speaking only about the fragment of the whole building which was originally far more larger and this is the entrance and in the entrance was found also this doorstep with some kind of element for the door. Uh, here on this, in the same building uh, there was found a hoard of locally minted uh, golden and silver coins and uh, here we have another example of the uh, building from the first century BC, um, we call it a structure with two preserved pillars. You see it with the uh, yellow color, the side walls and, and the pillars. Uh, as you can see on this uh, western wall, oh, we have even part of the uh, wall which was collapsed and was preserved uh, uh, till nowadays uh, to the height of two meters. Uh, here we see the hypothetical reconstruction, the elements which we found, and what is very interesting is that the, this structure was uh, reused uh, or rebuilt it later, and they added some additional constructions to it, uh, what speaks about longer span of the uh, lifespan of uh, this building. So it was uh, not a case of just let's say one generation, but, but uh, there were some changes going on. 
So here we have the documentation of the Roman uh, construction technique. Uh, this doesn't have parallels in Celtic world and Central Europe uh, as we know it uh, for now. So we are thinking that uh, there must be an, uh, a real uh, presence of the real Roman builders who, who built these structures uh, for the local inhabitants. Uh, so here we see uh, this uh, additional uh, structures north of the building 7. And uh, here we found uh, the preserved plaster bowl, which was preserved, uh, as you can see, to uh, one, uh, almost 2 meter, 1 meter 80 centimeters, and preserved uh, a door entrance with a doorstep. Here is the detail of the doorstep. And uh, here we see another, uh, the, well, probably the, ni ni the nicest preserved uh, uh, building on the northern terrace. It's a building with uh, eight uh, pillars. Uh, as you can see, one of the pillars was already um, mined away uh, during younger periods. A part of the structure was also damaged uh, by these younger construction activities. Uh, but the bigger part of the building was preserved in situ, including the situation of, uh, on the floors, where there were uh, really fines lying on the, <coughs> on the floor. So, now, let me uh, go further on to give you some kind of impression uh, of what everything we found there. So, uh, we have uh, uh, coins. Uh, mm, uh, this is the unique example uh, of the use of Latin alphabet on the coins. As far as I know, uh, Latin alphabet was used only in uh, these uh, coins which we consider to be uh, uh, Boy, and then yeah, there was lot, uh, Latin alphabet used, uh, used um, by the Norici. So. Here we have the Republican coins. So the silver one, but also the copper. And now um, to uh, explain that, that, that there is uh, not only uh, uh, this construction uh, or, or the import of the construction uh, ideas, uh, uh, but uh, there is also uh, uh, there, there are also also the finds uh, uh, which speak about direct uh, exchange with the territory of Italy. So here is. Uh, the situation preserved in situ, so really lying on the floor, uh, this building with eight pillars. We have uh, preserved Roman amphora, uh, and there were other amphoras found uh, within the excavations. Uh, mm, so here, here we even have the signated uh, amphora, and uh, here we have also amphora lids. Uh, to us, it seems that the uh, amphora that we found usually the necks and the rings of the amphoras and then the bottoms. It looks that the body of the amphoras were used in construction, as it was, for example, in Rome, where they were adding these shards of the pottery to the north of it. So probably uh, a similar situation here. We don't have the body parts; we have the top. Lamboria were, as you see, very small piece, but it's again uh, it's Lamboria there. And uh, some other imports, uh, this bell uh, is considered to be an uh, import from the Italy. Um, cobalt glass, uh, of course, it's only in. in Shards, uh, but there are several instances of this uh, of this precious pair to be found. Uh, this is about the imports. Then we have also some some 
local products of, of uh, some special quality. Uh, for example, this golden foil uh, for gilding, uh, which was also found in situ on the floor of this building with the pillars. The similar situation, copper ingot and sword shape, length one meter, and it was also lying on the same floor. So let me go to the conclusions. So um, importance uh, of uh, this other um, uh, find on the Bratislava castle is uh, that uh, they speak about the first touch with the economic and political interests of the Roman Empire. Uh, as the archaeological research, uh, research um, indicates us, uh, at the turn of the millennia, Bratislava castle saw its prime days and played a prominent role in a uh, broader European context of political and historical development. Uh, the boom, however, was soon followed by a violent destruction of the populism. So, therefore, also the uh, title of, of our paper. Greek wealth uh, generates enemies. So, proofs of violent acts, three skeletons near both of the floors of the Calderon buildings, pits with human bones, uh, um, together with shards of uh, foray and building debris, uh, as I said, including the parts of the floors. Uh, and, uh, for example, under the castle hill, during the 80s, they found a mass grave of 10 humans and uh, two animals. And there, uh, by reopening the uh, excavations, they again found uh, some kind of skeletons. Uh, here we have the archaeological situation, as we found it. A skeleton of a young male on the model floor of the Calderon building number eight. Another skeleton, a middle-aged male. And the third skeleton which we found is uh, was also the male, so uh, and also in like fighting age. Uh, so whom to blame? Traditionally it was considered that uh, Buddhavista, uh, king of Dacians, uh, uh, made uh, the military uh, expenditure against the Celts, and uh, Strabo mentions uh, um, this conflict with the leader of uh, uh, Bo Boi, um, uh, uh, Kritasir, uh, who suffered defeat, and uh, afterwards uh, we have Boi Desertum. Uh, but uh, of course, we, we uh, have no other proofs where exactly this happened. It could be a territory of the Pannonia. It could be also, also in our, our situation. Uh, but uh, the latest finds, they, uh, so, so this conflict should take a place around 44 before Christ. Uh, but the latest find, uh, they are uh, showing us that uh, uh, most probably uh, settlement continues after so-called Dacian War uh, till the last years at the turn of the millennia. Uh, there are some instances of early Germanic uh, pottery uh, in, within Bratislava Okedon, and there are coins of uh, no, Norizzi. So, uh, consequently, we can also speak about uh, pressure or power conflict uh, with strong and better established Norizzi after there was some destruction or, or the cutting of the trade roads, exchange roads, so some kind of collapse of the situation which could have been used by the Norizzi to capture this very important strategic uh, site and uh, to create uh, there uh, some kind of a central, central place. Uh, at the same time, we have a very interesting situation that uh, when we are coming closer to the uh, uh, to the turn of the millennia, uh, we, we don't have any more proofs from the Bratislava. But uh, it seems that the inhabitants, the, the people, are continuing to live in the terrain. So, at the end of the paper, yeah, I, it's, it's some kind of sim symbolics. So, yeah. Here, just to remind you, it's, it's very close. Uh, it's uh, within 15 kilometers 
uh, from uh, from the Bratislava, and uh, we see also the, the the Brownsberg, which in this picture is on the other side of the Danube. Uh, and uh, here we, uh, our colleagues found uh, a really very interesting situation. Here it is with this red uh, color distinguished uh, uh, basement of the uh, tower, which uh, they gave to the Augustian, uh, Augustian period. And um, <coughs> it's uh, most possible that, that, that here uh, we have a proof that the locals, local Celts who survived this catastrophic uh, uh, situations uh, lived until the arrival of the first Romans. So uh, thank you for your attention.